Hello, this is Pittsburgh Pat, and I'm here with Professor CC19. And we're going to do episode 18 of Earthbound, the NES game from 1994 or 5, depending on how you count, because exactly. the Japanese version came out one year before the American version did. Mm -hmm. And we are having a great time in this game. We're nearing the conclusion, the climax, however you can refer to it as last time. We defeated the alien base at Stonehenge up in Winters, traveled back to Tenda Village with the Shyness book, and now all the Tenda are willing to talk to us, which is helpful. This Tenda in particular was the one who was talkative already, and now she says, recently everyone is able to talk a lot, so I've lost my identity. Aww. <laughs> As being the only one who could talk. Who is bubbly and high-spirited, if you will. Mm-hmm. Her friend, the one standing right next to her, was the strong one, despite having those little dangly stick arms. Yeah. Powerful. I so show everyone. Hey! I got it, I got it. Yeah! <laughs> well, that was impressive. That was. In fact, if the rock still hasn't fallen down. It's Maybe she launched it back into orbit. Yeah, either back into orbit or it's stuck in the ceiling of the cave, in which case I wouldn't want to stand under here. Mm -mm. Uh, in the meantime, for anyone who's watching today, thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave a comment telling us why you like this kind of content or if you'd like to see some other kind of content from us. And today is also the day where the Daytona 500 was supposed to happen that we're recording this. It got delayed till tomorrow because of the weather. Yeah, you don't want people sliding off the track for no reason. That's not definitely. Yeah, it, it just shows you how strong Mother Nature is. It wrecks the plans of thousands, tens of thousands of people. Like, oh, we're gonna do this on this day, and the weather can just say, nope, nope. we're gonna have some water fall from the heavens. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, so we give him a um, the horn of life. He gives us the plain roll. You happy? I happy. Um, no. But that's okay. <laughs> You're not happy? Well, uh, it's not a fair trade, is it? I mean, really. Well, the plain roll. Mm -hmm. If we say help, it's one of the funnier items. Okay. I don't have a lot to say about this. I guess I... there are some people who think it's good. But it's worth 80, 80 HP, so not too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then... If we if we continue, oh whoops, I almost give him back the plane roll. Yeah, yeah, he he doesn't want that then. Um, if I continue onto the plane yogurt, we can see what that one says, and it says, "Yeah, that's horrible." Tastes had plain okay yogurt? in some respects, but it's worth 160 HP, so it's pretty good. Oh, it's a lot of HP, but. Have you ever eaten plain yogurt? Yeah, it's not it's terrible. You need yeah. to add fruit or something to it. Fruit or honey or granola. Just bad. <laughs> but the game is like, I, eh, I guess it's okay in some I guess it's form. Okay. It's okay. It'll it'll sustain your life. <laughs> your your taste buds will be miserable, but it'll sustain your life. <laughs> no, Hall of Fame bat. Who has the Hall of Fame bat? That is in Paula's inventory. We give it to Ness. Ness is going to equip it. Oh, uh, there's actually a description for that one, too, I think. Oh, let's look at it. Hall of Fame bat. Ness can equip... No, there's not. I thought there would be... That's it. There's one of them Ness that has... Equip... There's one of them that has, like, a big line about how much pine tar is on the bat. How good it is. <laughs> nice. Very plus, cool. Plus eight offense. All right. We're on full health. It's time for us to journey into this hole. We heard about dinosaurs. We heard about a talking rock. And let's see. Hmm. There's a rock. It looks like it has a face. Let's talk to the rock. Good evening. <laughs> hmm. It's only three Good in the evening. afternoon, but thank you. Huh. 
He must be in uh, UK time. It's 8 over there. 8 p.m. <laughs> I'm a talking... <laughs> well, I mean... Talking Rocks, Stonehenge... I guess... Well, this isn't Stonehenge, but a Talking Rock feels like something that would come out of the UK. <laughs> uh, I'm a Talking Rock, but the rocks around here don't talk too much. The rock that talks the most is deep down in the labyrinths way ahead in the lost underworld. So there's another talking rock. Don't forget to talk to the rock. It's important. I'm sure it must have something very important to tell us. Yeah, but it does. Probably sits there and watches everything. I actually kind of wrote a poem or a song about like, what if, like, you know the phrase, if the walls could talk? Sure. Well, I wrote a poem slash song about like, just a, a gray painted wall in a house that has been through like big historical events like and has seen all the suffering that's been caused by man fighting with each other over religion and over uh, power in countries and just like what that wall could say. I like the idea. It's um like the uh, room where Grant Lee signed the, uh, the surrender oh, at Appomattox. Appomattox. Yeah. Yeah. Something like historical like that happens in front of it, maybe. Or... And we go from serious to somewhat serious, somewhat silly, because we are in the underneath Tenda Caves. I'm honestly not sure what the name of this place is, but there's a path there we can go down and some. This isn't the Lost Underworld yet? Not quite. This is the Fobby instead of the Fapi from back in Belch's base. I love his battle background. Fabi. Yeah, it's very, um, like, um, early 1980s video game, like, um... Outer space, kind of? Like, yeah, not asteroids. More, like, more like, um, Defender or, like, uh... I'm trying to think of what video game this reminds me of. I just think of it like shooting stars. It's 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 a pretty background. Like I could make this as my screensaver on my computer. Yeah, it would be a wonderful screensaver for sure. And it's not too loud either. It's it's rather tame, but just pretty. Oh, All right, there's so a hole in the ground. That hole is going to give us something that we can't get out of. In contrast, there is a path over here with a rope where we can climb back up. Nice. Lots of monsters. Yeah, I think we're going to try maybe have less oh, of them nice. going forward here. Going to have to have one, though. The Conducting there was Spirit. A, so there was a present that uh, disappeared whenever that happened. Is that just a glitch? Yeah, it's the sprite layers. Um, yeah. This battle background is pretty cool, too. Oh, totally. It's got that electric feel to it. Um, we had the Conducting menace i think this is the conducting spirit uh he has stronger versions of flash and thunder which means i should probably take the franklin badge off ness and give it to somebody else if i'm smart um let's see if you're weak to freeze jeff with that heavy bazooka and poo try and mirror it that would be cool aside from you being electrocuted <laughs> Oh, it worked. Tried Thunder Gamma. That's three hits. Oh, wait. Oh, you just killed Ness. Oh, no. Wow. That's uh, hard to do. Apparently, I don't have the Franklin badge on Ness. Maybe I do have it on Jeff. Okay. But he is definitely weak to freeze, which is an advantage. Huh. IQ Capsule. Now... We don't have to give it to Jeff anymore, because he's fixed the broken bazooka. That's like the number one thing in the game he's going to fix. Okay. Um, there is another item where if he has high enough IQ, he can fix, and it's the broken antenna. However, it is yet another 1 in 128 item drop that would turn uh, into his strongest weapon. Yeah. However, there are two caveats. Number one... The heavy bazooka is still stronger than it, so we don't really have much point to it. 
And number two, even if we use all the IQ capsules we have on Jeff, there's a chance he still might not be high enough IQ by the end of the game, because I think it requires 64, which is really high. Uh, do you remember that old paint commercial where the girl says, I'm looking to paint my walls purple, but not so much of a purple, but more of a purple, you know what I mean? Uh, vaguely, I think I might have seen it. And it's just sounds, like a, sounds familiar. A row of like seven guys, all different shades of purple. And like, oh, which guy <laughs> is going to be her perfect match, a purple guy? Oh, no, I didn't see that. I would have remembered that part, I think. <laughs> um, who like, is royalty? He is prince. But there isn't any apparent king, unless it's the master that was training him there. But he never referred to him as king, so that's kind of strange. Hmm. Oh, dear. Prince, prince like 1999 prince. Oh, it's a back attack. Cool. The uncontrollable sphere. <laughs> yeah, it's... spheres are just hard. To, you know, you can't grab onto them very well. They slip out of your hands. It's uncontrollable, <laughs> really. Uh, we had the gold one in Dusty Dunes Desert. That was the smiling sphere. This one is black and purple, kind of like ultraviolet light. It blows up in our face when we defeat it. I'm just going to run away from this fight because we had a first yeah. attack, so we can do that. Pooh gains 10 HP, 5 PP, Healing Omega! Pooh is the first one to get that. That will bring um, everyone back from the dead on our side of the playing field. Great. Thank you, Pooh. Ooh, different battle background. The underground talking rock seems to want to talk a lot more than I do. <laughs> that would be quite the task, because I talk a lot. <laughs> mm. But then again, if you were an underground talking rock and you had no one to talk to that could understand you and you came across some people, that would... Yeah, you would talk their legs off. No doubt. Super bomb. Nice. And it went hey, just, just into the inventory of the person I wanted. Okay. Uh, I think we need to heal. Um, life up, alpha, Paula. Life up Beta Ness. Life up Alpha Jeff. Alright, we're good. Oh. <clears throat> so there's a hole to go down there or we go up. We can always come back here, so I think I'm gonna save the hole until later. And yet again, a different battle background for the same enemy. Mm -hmm. They have green. I think this is one of the only ones that has green in it here. Yeah, and sphere, and it's kind of like spheres. And then, I don't know, it looks like a punch card or something. Yeah, it does. It looks like almost when... Not Braille. Maybe like Braille. Like little, little dots. Yeah, maybe. Braille. Yeah, that seems that sounds right. Um, if you hadn't hadn't noticed yet, the Fobbies, Fobbies with a V, are incredibly weak and experienced grinding enemies. Yeah, they're just for us to make some money off of. Luck capsule. Who um, wants to be lucky? Let's see here. We got 63, 80, 61, 82. I'm surprised Jeff's is the lowest. Um... We're going to give it to Ness. He's so smart he doesn't need luck. <laughs> well, in context of Jeopardy, it's not even enough to be the smartest. It's also you have to be lucky, too, because of where the daily doubles are. Absolutely. Because that was a thing that uh, I saw talked about on the website. Jeopardy in 2024 is different than even 10 years ago because the level of play is been optimized so much by people and the, the other people have read it and tried to make improvements so um unless you're playing uh, like with optimal strategy it's uh it's gonna be quite the challenge so you have to be lucky and smart mm. all right diamonds what enemy is this uh oh this is more pink than purple so it's a, another slightly different one hyper spinning yep. robo Hyper spinning. 
Huh, what do I want to do here? I think we're gonna bash the Robo. I'm gonna use Freeze Gamma on the Spirit. The Bazooka only hits things in a row, so it's only gonna hit the one. I'm not gonna do Starstorm. Because I don't know if the spinning robo has a shield, and I wouldn't want it deflected back at us. <clears throat> no, that's a powerful attack. Fire to beam. Good job, Jeff. Alright, we're fine. Thunder beta. Okay, Jeff has to have the Franklin badge. Oh no. Hurry. I think we might have given it to him because he was weak when we gave it to him. There we go. We just saved Paula. And you can see how effective just mashing through the text boxes is now because it takes so long for their health to scroll down. It, it works. Yeah, that's fantastic. I would not have thought of that. I would not, not have thought there was a defense like that. Yeah, it's an older game, so the newer games don't have that mechanic. Also, I'm 99% sure this is the correct route. You can see what I was saying earlier about this area not having very much, like, funny dialogue. It's just mostly battles, trying to get where we're yeah. going. Kind of grinding, grindy. Um, life up, we don't have life up Omega yet. Does who have it? No. Life up Omega would heal all of our party members, so. Right. I think this would be a good time to give the brain food lunch to Paula because it heals her health and PP. So, hmm. maxed out, 50 PP. Oh, there it is. Luxury jerky. Luxury jerky. You were telling me about this. And there's the odd spacing there, a line break. So we had jerky which was six months on a laundry line we had spicy jerk jerky which is season the heck out of it and then eight months on a laundry line and now we have luxury jerky let's read the description a gourmet version of jerky that is considered a delicacy it is created by a skillful artisan who has been making jerky for over 60 years jerky fans consider this the caviar of all jerkies i understand that they don't dry gourmet jerky on a laundry line 300 HP. But they it's... don't reveal how they make it either because it's no. so exclusive. You don't want it to give like away the a... secret recipe. It feels like just a touch snobbish, but also somewhat reasonable because, I mean, really, who makes jerky on a laundry line? Well, you, you, okay, you totally so if you've, been make, if you've been making jerky for 60 years, I mean, let's you know assume that the absolute earliest you could possibly have been making jerky is like maybe five more more likely like 15 so uh -huh. everybody who's making this is old enough to retire but they're still making it so it's that's their passion something. of life <laughs> their name must be what jack's links or uh, what's, the, what's yeah. the other jerky brand uh oh golly i don't know Yes, I mean? will say Jack. Or what? Um, Jack Lynx and... Pemmican. Uh, maybe. Um, Slim Jim. Yeah, Slim Jim is the, the famous one. That's been this around is, forever. This is the Earth's belly button. <laughs> That's what he says. Thank you, Mr. Rock. Great. What do we do with that information? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. Uh, <laughs> Use it on Jeopardy. Where hey, is the Earth's belly button? It's in Earthbound. I was going to say that it's funnier because imagine you get a chance to talk to someone after not talking to anyone in years, and that's the first thing you say to them. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even ask, but yeah, it's the Maybe Earth's that's... belly button. But maybe that's why there's not many people down to visit you. Exactly. I'm like, no, no thanks. 
All right, so the Fobbies have psychic attacks, brain shock, magnet. However, they have the same issue as the attack slugs way back at the beginning that they can't concentrate for a few turns, so they can't hurt us. HP sucker, there you go. Ah. That's one of Jeff's items, and for whatever random reason, these enemies, of all things, have it. <laughs> so there it is, it's right here. However, there's a little path to the left here with... A rabbit's foot inside. Luck. Not luck, surprisingly. Oh. It makes whoever has it the fastest of the party. Ah, rabbit. So, in general, people put it on Jeff and use his bottle rockets, like the multi-bottle rockets that can one-shot anything, and they use it like in the first turn, so he gets them off immediately. However, its defense ability isn't the greatest. Um, let's see, where is it? Rabbit's foot. Must be equipped on your body. Protects you from paralysis. Increases your speed in a big way. In a so big let's, way. Let's, let's illustrate this. If we give it to Ness, that would be nice because he's pretty slow. Right now, Ness has a speed yeah. of 29. Pathetic. Pathetic. If, if we equip the rabbit's foot, he loses 12 points of defense, but his speed suddenly becomes 69. Ah, so yeah, it's, it's interesting to have those kinds of objects in a game where you plus, have to make a choice. Plus 40 speed. I think I'm going to yeah. keep it for this fight against this Sanctuary boss, just to see how it goes. This Sanctuary boss is kind of strange. It doesn't have really strong physical attacks. It does kind of like items and psychic things. We'll see what happens. Yeah, let's uh, check it out. Are you ready for seven of eight? I am. You finally got here. Mm -hmm. This is the seventh your sanctuary location, but it's mine now. Take it from me, if you dare. Oh, we dare. Electro Spectre. Oh. Nice background. He has the green version of the Sanctuary boss, which is somewhat unique. I don't think anyone else has green. Cool design. I like the name Electro Spectre. His arms look like lightning bolts. Well, characteristic of this enemy, this has been a very strange fight thus far. Um, Paula got the freeze deflected back at her, but she didn't take much damage because she resists freeze. And then Jeff got hit with lightning, but it deflected back at the Electro Spectre. So, so far, most of the damage done has been done by the person themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, well, if it has a psychic shield, I'm not sure what we're supposed to do. Why did the shield killer not work? What else do we have? Shield killer counter... Counter PSI unit? I don't... I'm, I'm not exactly sure what this does. There we go, smash, nice. Ooh, cool. Yeah, that's a neat effect. I've never used that before, so I've never seen that before. But I'm, I still don't know what it did. It didn't look like it did anything. I don't, it, it did not have a number in its dialog box, so I assume there was no damage. Um, it, in the meantime, the Spectre, so quickly, I can't read it. the Spectre, well, it said it didn't work, but uh, the Spectre did uh, okay. more damage to itself by targeting Jeff. Uh, maybe you should stop doing that. <laughs> Why do you uh, keep hurting yourself? <laughs> Super, honestly, I think this fight is going to be over before we manage to get rid of the shield. We'll try it again, I guess. Hmm. Did not work. Okay, maybe it's only physical shields that'll do that. Use the neutralizer. There you go. Use the neutralizer. So that gets rid of PSI effects. Does that mean it got rid of its own shield? I, I have to. I have to see. Freeze alpha because it's fine. This is such a weird enemy. <laughs> Yeah, it got rid of its own shield with the neutralizer. 
So, congratulations on the new Dumbest Enemy Award. <laughs> um, you'd think the boss fight would be a little harder, but it makes it easy when, thus far, it's done five damage, uh, five attacks that's done damage actively to itself, and then it got rid of its own shield. <laughs> For uh, boss. I have no reservations to just using everything we have on him right now, because we're going to get a full heal in, like, 10 minutes. Uh, not 10 minutes, like 2 minutes. So, I'm gonna just use everything on him. Huh. Love Gamma and Freeze Omega. 410. And... 593. Goodbye. I'm fine. I'm sorry we didn't revive you, Pooh. <laughs> we probably should've. It is so satisfying to see you all running away from me. <laughs> especially when there's especially when there many. are that many yes it's like a infestation of ladybugs or something it's all it's, it was so much that they couldn't even run away like they were stuck okay there's another talking rock hi oh no this is that's the same one okay i guess we can just do that that's probably what they're for. They're probably for as markers so that you remember where you were in the cave. I, I suppose, say, yeah. Say things that are very distinctive. Because this just shot us back like right where we were. Right. Right next to... Oh, that actually would have been a faster way to do it. I have to take note of that if we like ever if I ever speedrun this. Because if we go down that hole, it will put us in a room that pops us up right next to the boss. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. Learned how to read a map at a very young age. It's really not hard. Were you like a voice I guess or a, a tracker? No, I just, no, I just like maps. In fact, um, I remember my parents always had a bookcase that was close to the floor and there was a world atlas in there. And I think at first ah, I just liked atlas. the colors of the maps, like the colors of the different nations and states and that sort of thing. And then as I learned how to read, I was really good at, uh, memorizing the capitals hmm. and the cities and the locations oh, yeah. and that sort of thing. Very, very good at geography. Early start for Jeopardy, right? I guess so, yeah, because it's really not used for anything <laughs> at all anymore. <laughs> okay, well, we're in gonna... Command Central here. This looks like it's uh, from War Games or something. It does. I like that movie. That was a good movie. Um, yeah. What was I going to say? Um Oh, did geography, you see that, trivia. Did you, did you see that new show, Tracker, on CBS that premiered after the Super Bowl? I could not get away from all of the commercials. I did not watch it because uh, the commercials were like just annoyed the heck out of me. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I think it's enough, it took, CBS. It took a while. It's enough. Yeah. Yeah. The Super Bowl went on for a while. So. Was it good? It was a good game. It went to overtime, so that's why it took so long. Oh, no, no. I, no, I watched the Super Bowl. I oh, the show, it. yeah. Um, yeah. It was okay. Like, it was the kind of show I would watch. Like, I like action shows. Um, of course, oh, it's an it action to, thing? Kind of. It's like an outdoorsy okay. mm, yeah. person helping People a get cop. Lost, but not in, and then he... Well, it's like a, he rescues either lost people or kidnapped people by using his own knowledge set from when he was raised in the woods. But then there's going to be like the ah. whole mystery thing, like who is the one that killed his father? Why does the mother not want him to investigate it? Um, and of ah. course, he has to have a romantic interest in the very first episode, and it has to wind up in bed. And it's like, okay, yeah, that's just predictable. Yeah, but like I so like trying the to give the characters some different, like they're trying to give the writers a bunch of different storylines they can investigate, basically. Yeah, it just drives me crazy that I I feel like I recognize the guy so much, but I don't recognize his name. He's a type. The actor, like you can tell, like it's a your cast for your look, and uh, yeah, he looks it's all, like I mean, what? they're looking for yeah. a relatively tall, short yeah, beard, some... nice hair, yeah. good looking guy mm -hmm. to get all the. Yeah younger Athletic. women and like people who are interested in anything related to that idea to watch and it makes sense like people aren't going to watch a show whose star is the hunchback of notre dame no offense but it's just true i guess it's just i the, the major networks are 
I think I feel like they're they have to try so hard to play catch up to like the streaming, streaming services, services. Yeah. because there's nothing on any of those networks I want to watch. Like there's nothing yeah. on TV I want to watch. To, to be honest, <laughs> I don't really care about anything on the streaming services either. Well, see, the streaming services they come up with like I don't know, like they could do so much more. So and they yeah. can take chances. You know, yeah, their so, own production budgets and whatnot. The only thing I really yeah. cared about on streaming was the reboot of Frasier, which was decent. Not as good as the original, but decent. Yeah. Um, That's cool. But yeah, it's it's not to say that someone who doesn't fit the norm of what they're looking for, like whether it's a handsome man or a woman of a certain age and height and weight, couldn't be successful and is not very talented. It's just the industry has what they're looking for and despite your talent appearance plays a lot into it it's it's shallow but it's very true i know a guy that got a part in a um unsolved mysteries episode only because he fit into the costume <laughs> they had the costume they're like what size is he okay 42 regular you're in okay. and then he played the policeman because they had a police uniform he had to really? play a policeman in a scene yeah mm-hmm that's how he got the part. Well, that so, reminds me of in Hogan's Heroes, Schultz actually had to regain weight for um, the part after the in between seasons of taping. He lost weight. They had to either give him padding or he had to regain some weight back. And they said his wife, the actor John Banner's wife, was a really good cook. And a lot of the cast would love to eat at her house. She always invited people over. She loved to cook for people. So he said that's that made it easier to gain weight. How cool is that? That's really neat. I did not know that story. What's even funnier is the fact that they use that specifically to make jokes because Schultz's wife was a bad cook in the show. Like they would joke about it because she was such an amazing cook in real life. So like his one line is, oh. uh, I'm having a bad day. I'm just dreaming about the wonderful meal my wife will cook for me when I go home. If by some miracle between now and then she turns out to be a good cook. <laughs> <laughs> and that's also the the reason that LeBeau is able to seduce him with you know like <laughs> all of his cooking right the so and he's the, com um, he's compliant the, yes the mm -hmm. soup or whatever whatever not the episode where LeBeau is trying to teach the other men how to cook and Schultz is in the background and LeBeau is talking about the pepper and the steak and like how he cooks it and using these big descriptive metaphors and Schultz is like starting to cry in the background he's like cockroach will you marry me <laughs> 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 that's yeah. wonderful um so yeah so this is the very sparkly lighting up and flashing area which is our seventh sanctuary shall we ah. proceed onward let us i'm <laughs> mess it's been a long road getting here. Soon I'll be, soon I'll be, soon I'll be, what will happen to us? <laughs> I'm saying it early because it, it's, it's taking a while and I remember what some of this is. What's happening? My thoughts are being written out on the wall you can see how awkward it is when you read it slowly or are they <laughs> it's funny so ness isn't sure what's going to happen next it's getting to the point where there's a lot of reservations about continuing on because it's getting crazy yeah, has Ness's mind been uploaded into a computer? What is happening here? Ness saw a vision of his father holding him. Ness's soundstone recorded the melody of Lumine Hall. I person? like how it's like it's Lumine because luminescent. Luminescent. Ness, I shouldn't say the battles aren't necessarily that out of this world difficult it's just the psychological aspect 
when we had the drink of tea and the whole philosophy of how far you've come, good and evil, that kind of thing, in the last episode, mm -hmm. I said that the game would get tougher psychologically. And think about this from the perspective of a 13-year-old boy. You have the incredible psychic power to defeat all these monsters. You know the fate of the world is at stake. You are on a completely different continent from home, having journeyed from town to town across the sea through pyramids, and now you are underground, about to go to a place where no human has supposedly gone before. How, hmm. would, your, how would you be holding together mentally? I don't know. I mean, when I was 13, I think I was fearless. You know, like I really, it was just, everything was an adventure. So I had no real, you know, reservations. Uh, but um, but I, I don't know that that's normal. Um, I thought, you know, maybe I would say a 13 when you're year young, old boy. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's definitely know? either side for that. Because when you're that young, mm -hmm. you are fearless in your mind. You are um, 10 feet tall, in a manner of speaking. Mm -hmm. And this is it is the epic adventure that you wish you could have at some points in life. But then again, all the world around us is quite a scary place. So um, just the balance. Between yeah, I guess it was before before you find out that uh, you can't do everything because all the, the uh, you know, your teachers, your parents, you know, they're all saying, you know, you can do anything you want in life, anything. And, you know, when you're 13, you still believe that. And then it's not until you get a little bit older when you realize, no, there are limitations. You know, there are physical limitations. There yeah. are uh, time considerations. You know, there are people that do things that are, you know, they take a lot of years to train in order to be able to do those things. Mm -hmm. And are you going to, you know, but that sort of wisdom isn't, isn't there when you're, thir when, well, for me, it wasn't there when I was 13. So. It's exactly, it's the difference between wisdom and like the spark inside of you because like as you get older you understand more about the reality of the world but when you're young it's like oh you have the inspiration you can do anything it's like where in the balance between them leads to the most productive yet safe lifestyle so yeah that's a great way to put it yeah I, for me yeah, i my think family, my family just yeah. got done reading like Ecclesiastes and the whole King Solomon had it all. He had riches, he had power, he had a lot of women, and he still wasn't able to find happiness. So um, definitely that, that's coming into play. Yeah, I like Ecclesiastes a lot. I like the snippets. So like, There's a lot of good sound bites in Ecclesiastes. But I think what happens is sometimes when someone has more it takes so much more to be satisfied. I don't know what that is. Mm. I don't know if that's something that's innate in human beings, if it's an instinct from like survival wow. days when like you had to search far afield in order to get food or something of that nature. But it seems like that's ingrained in some people more than others. Um, that's that quest of like never being full, you know, always trying to, to, to find more, you know. I told you the end of this game would spark some deep conversations. <laughs> Welcome to the Lost Underworld. Aha! Uh-oh. Earthquake. We are tiny! Oh, that's us. That's us. <laughs> this, that's is the, this is the final location of the game that we can teleport in and out of. There are some limitations here. Since we are in a place of the world that no one else human has been apparently um escargo express can't get to us down here neither can the pizza delivery man uh we can't have any photo man spots because we are tiny. i was gonna ask about photo man yeah uh if we did and there's a way to like glitch out of this area and keep the tiny bodies if we did trigger a photo man spot in this form ness would for one second get go back to his big form to give the peace sign to the camera and then shrink back down again <laughs> <laughs> that's clever and that little thing up there that looks kind of like the red thingy that dangles from a chicken that's a present so we're gonna see about yeah, i can see the present there. yeah yeah present um, i recognize dinosaurs yep they're here uh oh there's one of them oh there's one hi and it back attacked oh, us it's 
Not going to be fr friendly, huh? This is the wet nosaur. It looks like a little puppy dog. Wet nose sore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Has the tail. Cute. Has a little chubby belly and tiny arms and the big black nose and a smile. He's the weaker of the two dinosaur species here, hence doing only 69 damage to Paula with his huge foot. The stronger of the two, which we'll see, is the Chompasaur, which is a much bigger sprite, is purple, and uh, a lot more dangerous. Chompasaur. <laughs> I love it. What a great name. Yeah, I think the Chompasaur has the highest HP of any regular enemy in the game. So we are pretty much down to the final stage of enemies, the strongest regular enemies. Yeah. Mm. In case of uh... danger, evacuate here. The boss. The boss? What's Bruce Springsteen doing down here? <laughs> I don't get it, man. But no humans were down here. There's a big round thing over here. Oh, really big. The ego orb with a okay. bonkers, bonkers battle background. I love the face. It's awesome. It is very strange. Um, you'd think it would be kind of psychic with it being a giant mystical orb, but nope. It chooses the more brute force, brute force path. And um, physical attack means rolling over you. Yeah, I guess uh, that's what I would think. A giant marble. <laughs> a giant marble. Uh, a giant boulder, more like. Uh, we use freeze bear. Yeah, I was thinking like that Indiana Jones type of thing. Oh yeah, that's the second time we're bringing him up in conversation. And he's not that bad. I think he has the lowest health of the three enemies here. You guys smell really good. Tender Who am crop. I? I'm a tender. Hey, what are you doing inside our dinosaur cage? <laughs> they think the outside of their fence is the cage, when really they're the ones uh, stuck inside. That's cute. I'm going to open the door and you get out of there right now. I'm the boss, so I will let you out. That's the Bruce, boss. Bruce Springs Tenda. Born in the under world. world. Something. <laughs> we'll work on it. Born in Eagle Land, because it's USA. Uh, they yes. took our tender. Born in Eagle Land. The awful smell Aww. surrounding the group is now gone. Oh, thank oh. goodness. What's funny is I had sauerkraut yesterday. After we ah. talked about how bad it, we didn't like cabbage last time, found out yeah. a couple days yeah. ago was National Cabbage Day, and I had sauerkraut yesterday with mashed potatoes and pork and hot dogs. Actually, it was better than I remember. It's actually okay. That's good. I'm waiting for Pie don't... Day. Oh, yeah, the 14th. Why don't you see the talkative mystery rock? That rock really jabbers away. Yes, that's the one we want to meet. Even though I listen to the talkative mystery rock story, I don't understand what he's talking about. Hmm. Mm. We'll it's interpret like, for you. It's like Biden. I can hear him saying words, but I'm not sure what they mean. We made a cage for the dinosaurs and locked them up. That's what my brother tells me. But I don't believe it. He's just spewing out of his cake hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Half, of, half of what you see, some, and none of what you hear. Even if it's your oh. own brother. Wow. Well, scratch that. Especially if it's your own brother. They might tell you you're adopted. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's a classic. Well, uh, what I was going to tell you is, uh, yep. when I was waiting at a doctor's office the other day, I actually found the entire text dump from Earthbound on a website. It's literally every oh, wow. single line of text in the game, from every character, every item description, just everything. It's so long. And, like, I was looking oh, for, for um, anything significant. I was only looking for, like, the newspaper texts from the hotels. Found some interesting ones. Mm -hmm. Um... But yeah, I'll look through it again and maybe in our next episode highlight some of the best lines that we didn't get a uh, chance to see. Okay. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Shall I loan you some money? Say no, because he is like the guy in Deep Darkness. He'll charge you equally as much for what you take out. So, yeah. Like 100% interest? 
If you take out a hundred, he'll charge you an extra hundred. So. Oh my. I don't think oh, so. Thank you. Finally, you talk to me. Listen, Ness. I'm going to tell you something very important. You may want to take notes. <laughs> that's because not. Totally yeah, when a game tells right? you to take notes, that's that's intense. Ready? It actually gives okay. you the chance to go and write this down. It, that is that is just. just <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is important. You're the chosen one. Your destiny is not only yours, it is the destiny of the whole universe. My goodness. No pressure. There will be a time in which all of you in the universe will overlap each other. It's not necessary to understand now. Good, because I don't. I don't think anyone does. Huh. Do you remember Giant Step and Onet? Yeah. That is one of your sanctuary. It is a spot which gives you power and allows you to realize all your skills. There was a monster that protected it. The monster was influenced by the power of the place. You must have beaten those monsters. You must reach all of the eight power spots in the world. When the soundstone records the melodies of all eight power spots, you can finally see your world. My voice is just naturally deeper today, and I'm not really sure why. That's good. Fits I'll the tell, character. I'll tell you all of the power spots. Considering we've found seven of them, seven of the eight already, we're already 87.5% the way Thanks. there, so there's only one it. bit of information yeah. that's going to be at all helpful. Tell me the last one. Actually, come to think of it, I will retract that, because it is 100% possible that we could have skipped over... Um... We could have skipped over the one in Tucson and Threed. So we could have still had those left to get. Oh, so we Just, would have had to backtrack. Yeah. Exactly. Speedrunners do that because if you're strong from fighting all of these areas, you can go back and breeze through those last. That makes sense. Two. Uh, so we had Giant Step, Lilyput Steps, and Peaceful Rest Valley near Tucson. Milky Well and Grapefruit Falls in Saturn Valley. Rainy Circle, found by Jeff in Winters. Magnet Hill at the edge of the city of Forsyth. Pink Cloud, which Pooh knows. And Lumine... <clears throat> Lumine Hall, which was referred to before as Lumine Hall. Oh. It is a discrepancy that the game just kind of forgot about, because both of them make sense. It's a hall, and there's a hole, so... Where the shining lichen lives in a cave. Thank you for describing what made all that light happen. So thank you. Um, lichen are like algae, right? Mm, no, they're um, they're like they're part plant, part animal. Like they're some they're their own kingdom or okay. phylum. Yeah, and uh, but yeah, they're more like fungus. Okay, yeah, fungus. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah. I knew it was something kind of plant, but not well, not fully something plant. like that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know they shine. They shone like that. I don't know if the game just kind of added that, or if they actually do reflect light super well. I don't know if uh, I can have any bioluminescence or not, but uh, it's often used as a trope that cave fungus will emit light in order to mm -hmm. give D and D adventurers or video game adventurers, because I know like Fallout New yeah. Vegas. You'll go into sense. a cave, and it'll talk about cave fungus giving off light. But I don't even know if that's a real thing. Oh, by the way, have you ever been to Grand Caverns? Uh, where's that? No, I haven't. In uh, Virginia. Oh, no. Uh -uh. It is like one of the biggest, yeah. biggest cave systems in the north, uh, in the like the eastern seaboard states. And we went, oh okay my family went a couple years ago went like three quarters of a mile into the mountain it's wonderful neat i'll have to try that i've been to laurel caverns which is south of pittsburgh uh, on several yeah. occasions it's a catacomb uh you can there's an upper cave that's lit and you can walk through and it's you know they have a little like souvenir shop and that sort of thing but um then there's the real lower cavern and you have to be kind of an adventurous spelunker to go down into spelunker, the i love that word yeah but yeah spelunker. there's 
Grand Caverns has like the guided tour and then like every couple of weeks they have their professional cave explorer spelunker they invite you to like they provide the gear they will go along with you into like the deeper more dangerous parts of the caves if you sign that you won't sue them if you get hurt <laughs> of course but they'll make sure you won't get hurt right number eight a new place is now going to be opened up to you fire spring located southwest of here listen to the melodies of all eight power spots and if you do not fail you may upset Gaiga's plans understand ness the time will come the time when the destiny of the you and the whole universe will overlap it is fast approaching again no pressure yes this dinosaur overheard everything he's just been standing there and smiling at us and wagging his tail <laughs> yeah he's yeah he's the mole he's the he's the spy <laughs> he's like ooh, i want to hear about it too oh by the way there's the edge of the world right there can't go further than that can you clip off the map um i hope not <laughs> mm -hmm. oh i mean like when speed runners do that sometimes with little uh not here usually they do it in a particular area and gotcha. I forget where exactly to do it, but basically, if you get sick, so if, like if you have nausea or a cold, and when you're close to dying, there's a little message that pops up saying like, alert, the condition is serious. If you don't treat it soon, the one party member will die. If you mm -hmm. get that text box to pop up while you're walking on stairs, it allows you to clip out of bounds. Hmm. So that is what speedrunners use. We have to use psychic attacks because he has a physical power shield, I believe. Hmm. Which is why Jeff and the shield killer would be nice. Gotcha. You can see what it'll do to us. It has some strong attacks. Wow, that was really intense. 278s. Body's the okay, never mind. He's not gonna do anything this turn. That's good. Shield disappeared. Alright, I'm just gonna use physical attacks this turn because the shield is gone. And then let's see what it does next turn. See what it'll do to us. Yeah. Swung its tail very hard. 211 damage. Goods, heavy bazooka, and who you healed Jeff for us. Oh, nope, that's all we needed. Cool. We'll fight another one. Maybe we can see about getting that magic fry pan, but otherwise, yeah. Ooh, there's another cave. There is a cave. But this isn't southwest, this is directly west, so this can't be the cave that the rock was talking about. It's going anyway. Is that a tentacle? It appears that so, way. Or an obelisk. There is some ruins down there. Mm-hmm. And we're kind of stuck here. There's, there's nothing that we can do off preview. this ledge. Yeah, just a little preview. Hmm. It's almost as like something important happened here a really long time ago, and this is just the reminder of what ruins lay beyond. Hmm. Or lay behind. Cloak of Kings. That's Pooh's other item. Yay! So we get three of four. We can't get these so sort defense. of kings, but... Yes, it is. And one of our friends on the sidewalk says, Hello, Ness! Hey, what's going on? Oh, no, never mind. He's gone. Oh, I'm sorry, I gotta go back to the dinosaurs. Wait! Oh, my! Well, <laughs> it's good to know we can just leave whenever we want. Yeah. By the way, it's actually... Yeah. Uh, if we teleport in and we teleport like on top of one of the dinosaur sprites, it can actually crash the game. So it's a good thing we just saved. That's cool. Two, three more episodes? Something like that. Three, I say three more like pure story progress. Because like next time mm -hmm. we're going to go explore the fire spring. 
last sanctuary location. That unlocks a new cool. area called Your World. There's that present. I see it. Sea Pendant. Ooh, what's that? I say it's so important because right now, I told you last time, Ness resists Flash, Paula resists Freeze, Just re Jeff resists Fire. Whoever wears the Sea Pendant resists everything. Hmm. So it's basically immunity, so you will take very little damage from whatever the enemy uses. Give it to Ness. Uh, I'm going to give it to Paula, because okay. I think it's more important and more important to have her alive. Because she's so weak, the weakest uh, one with uh, yeah. HP. Exactly. Got it. Generally, Defend so right now her. she has the rain pendant, so that means she resists freeze. Uh -huh. Um... We're going to switch it out for the C pendant. Are we going to give the rain pendant to somebody else? See, that's what I'm debating. Oh, it's also plus five defense. That's what I'm deba debating, because if we give the rain pendant to Ness, he also resists freeze, but then he's weak to flash, and we're going into a place that does not use freeze. He uses fire a lot, so... So we just hold it and not equip it? Yeah, we're just going to hold it. Okay. So What's cool is I think we can go around this dinosaur. Freeze. Yeah, that is cool. Nice. He's just kind of like stuck there. I mean, we're in an area where the sanctuary is called the Fire Spring. So you got to know that they're going to be using fire. You would think. Sorry, Ego Orb. I hope that wasn't a blow to your ego. Ha <laughs> ha. Is it an mm -hmm. ego? Ooh, left behind a present. Skip sandwich. Skip sandwich. The logs. Nice. I feel like. I feel like that's pretty rare. The, I don't think it's a 1 in that? 128. I, th I don't think it's a 1 in 128, but I, don't, I think that's pretty rare. Earthbound Ego Orb. I'm looking it up. Mm -hmm. I was just going to do that, but since you're someone doing made that, a yeah. Someone made a clay model of it. It looks so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more about this enemy. Experience points is worth 24,000 experience. Drops the skip sandwich DX. How often, though? Yes. Drop from uh, 8 in 128. So, 1 in 16? Hmm. Or 2 in 128 is 164. So, yeah, it's a 1 in 16 chance. That's, that's, that's okay. Here, the dinosaurs don't come and attack me, so I can relax. Except now I can't. You realize that the, the door is open right here, and it could come in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. I will see you in the next video. And Pat will be here, too, hopefully. Yep, that's what we intend. Yes, I, I will be here. Couldn't Ness sent me a message here. telling me I was going to be here. It's okay. <laughs> All right. Bye for now, everybody. Have a great day.